Hi, I'm Doug Jensen. I'm the Vice President of Sales at Pattern. I've spent the last three years helping brands manage their relationship with Amazon or migrating to a different seller strategy. Cost in a 1P relationship on Amazon can be hard to understand and time consuming to track down, leaving you to dedicate too many resources and overspending to support your Amazon business. So I'd like to walk you through what the true cost of an Amazon first party or 1P relationship look like. To be specific, this is when you sell directly to Amazon. Also important, Amazon is a marketplace. Roughly 40% of sales go through the 1P seller model we're discussing now. The other 60% are third-party sellers, known as 3P. It's hard to understand all the costs that go into this, but we think it's mission critical to know the cost to operate on Amazon. And as we dig in, we will likely find areas you are not fully accounting for, and my hope is you uncover all the costs to support Amazon. At Pattern, we've broken this down into five different buckets. The first bucket is very simple. It's a wholesale rate. This is the price you sell to Amazon. If you sell your goods to Amazon, let's say one SKU has a retail selling price of $100, this is sold to Amazon at $80. That's your wholesale rate. That's how Amazon likes to talk about it, so you'll hear that referred to as a PPM. The next bucket is referred to as the net PPM. The net PPM includes your wholesale rate plus any additional co-op funding or accruals. These are the additional costs that can sometimes go unseen, but are included by Amazon in order to sell to Amazon in a 1P relationship. Now I'll give you a few examples of those. Damage allowances, freight allowances, and MDF, also called marketing discretionary funds. Amazon has all first party vendors paying these marketing discretionary funds. And the idea for them is that you're contributing dollars to help support the category and Amazon's platform. It's kind of a pay to play thing. Other accrual costs include marketing funds, things known as GMMs, crap funding, which means can't realize a profit, and SAS support funding, which is a strategic account services rep. You're essentially paying Amazon for support contact. So if we go back to the $100 example, Amazon pays you $80 wholesale. And when you add in all the net PPM accruals, that might take you down to $50 for what you actually keep, as Amazon's invoices include net PPM accruals. Now the third bucket is operating margin, or at least I'm calling it operating margin. These are all very common items that everyone in a 1P relationship deals with. These are things like chargebacks. Also included in this operating margin bucket are shortage claims and other free cash flow initiatives. So those are the three buckets, PPM, net PPM and operating margin. The reason I grouped those three buckets together is those are foundational for anyone operating in a 1P relationship. But there are still two additional buckets to consider. The first of those are off-platform costs. Things like Amazon SEO and advertising agencies, creative and content agencies, or third-party consultants to manage chargebacks. There are all kinds of other off-platform costs that go into supporting the Amazon channel. Then there are costs like your resources, your warehousing, your employees, your forecasting efforts, all of those things that go into injecting product, keeping it in stock, and forecasting it accurately. You might also pay for compliance or legal support to keep the channel clean, to support your distribution policies, to create map policies, and more. There are also a wide range of data and software providers around Amazon. As you look for their costs to support the channel, be aware that there can be a lot of software and data costs to support Amazon in a 1P relationship. Let's review a side-by-side -side view of the breakdown I just talked through. On the left is the wholesale or PPM. $100 sale price if Amazon wholesale is buying that from you at $80. That's number one. Number two, I list very specific things you can look at and look for, and I've given estimated percentages. These are common percentages. They won't be precise to you and your team, but they should give you a decent range of what to expect and to be paying from a net PPM bucket perspective. Third, if you stay far left, these are all the items that would come into what I'm calling operating margin. Look for shortage payments, chargebacks, advertising, SIOC, etc. On the fourth bucket, these are the platform costs. Examples are agencies, consultants, legal, software, and analytics tools. I left the fifth bucket out of this example. That's the miscellaneous bucket, but I want you to be aware of it. Reminder, that's things like warehousing, forecasting, labor, and so forth. Rest assured, it's not easy, and every brand we work with struggles to understand the true costs of their 1P relationship. Because if you're miscalculating your 1P costs, there could be an alternative seller strategy that protects your pricing, grows you faster, and is much easier to manage.